What's up you guys? It's Lauren Delisa Coleman and I am back with another interview during the fabulous Berlin Film Festival. You know, we are bringing it right straight to you here at the Inside Series for Filmio and I am really excited um, for this next one because I wanted to catch up with him during Sundance for the premiere but he was too fab and too busy but now I'm just able to eke in a little bit of time during Berlin, um, the Berlin Film Festival where I'm getting him live and direct, I guess in his hotel room. Guys, welcome please Antonio Mar the filmmaker behind Star Bleepers. We will show you the full title <laughs> below. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. Antonio, thanks so much for taking the time. Oh my gosh, of course. Thank you so much for having me. So tell our viewers, those who are not in the know just yet, because this is really blowing up. Tell us all about, like a quick synopsis, I guess I should say, and then we'll hear yes. all about the making <laughs> of it. But a quick synopsis yes. about okay, Star Bleepers. Star Bleepers. Um, the film examines uh, power dynamics with the backdrop of it being in Hollywood. And I think the film at its heart is a revenge story about these two twinks who kind of take over a famous director's house and, um, yeah, get revenge on him. Woo! I, I, just, I love it. Um, so tell me how you, you came up with this. Hopefully it's not biographical, right? No, only joking, it's, but it's how not. did you come up with this story? Um, well, the revenge thriller is my favorite uh, genre of film. And I wanted to explore themes of identity and processing of trauma through art. And um, just wanted to celebrate. Um, I I'm hesitant to say anything because I don't want to give away the second half of the film, but I just will. Like, I, I, it's to celebrate the art of drag and yeah. to kind of honor um, the the individuals who have just inspired me throughout my life. And it's such a um, yeah, it's 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 really a celebration of that. Nice. So tell me a little bit about, <clears throat> I guess, the journey on this, Antonio. I mean, like, how long did it take you from like really just this is a thought to like, you know, actually being able to sit there with a final cup. How long was that <laughs> process for you? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, I had written this a while ago, maybe two years ago and kind of shelved it for a little while, having a hard time explaining it to people because I do think the film is a little bit hard to, to put your finger on. Mm -hmm. And so um, I kind of brought it back off the shelf and the first kind of, infusion of other than writing it where I felt like oh maybe there's something here is I went into a recording studio and I recorded everything that I had written for the film and I did all of the voices for the film no way yeah so then so after I did that I sent that along with the script and kind of in the script wrote like start mp4 here and then that allowed people to have a more like no way theory. I love that <clears throat> yeah now, how did you come up with that idea? Like, you guys, this is like one to steal. Like, is, is this like typically your process or what? Um, I have ADD and a pretty creative brain. So I think, I don't <laughs> know. Like, I think I was just threading together a lot of things that inspired me at the time. And, and you know, yeah, watching drag performances that have inspired me, honoring the women that have inspired me throughout my life. Like, you know, I find myself sometimes at 2 a.m. just watching Barbara Streisand videos on like Ooh, the we love her. Oh, we love her. We love her. She's an icon. So uh just kind of incorporating a lot of the things that inspired me throughout my life and you know, just trying to kind of put them all into one one piece. I, I love this idea of like recording and adding that into it. I mean, I think that I've started to do this with like video a little bit if I need to send a business mm -hmm. email and I just want to make certain a few like some passion goes through. I'll just like send a fifteen like second video yeah. and it just seems to really it makes exactly. a difference because it's another expression of your being right that you can kind of right. uh, connect more emotionally with, with audio and video which you can't do via text totally agree and any way you can kind of create your project um to have like allow your project to have more texture is amazing like so, so true definitely definitely recommended because it is a visual medium and sometimes reading something is really not the same experience as hearing it or seeing it so that definitely um helps people get excited about the project and to understand the world that i was trying to create a little bit better because on the page it didn't come like it's sure it came alive but it was just hard to describe to people if they hadn't seen it especially right. these kind of like 
it's a drag performance, but it's also kind of just like a textured soundscape is how I describe it. I don't know. I, I don't know fully how to describe it, but that was what was challenging on trying to get the people that I wanted for the project. So that was kind of the um, second thrust of the creative piece. And then we filmed it. So then how long was all that all together then? So I recorded um, the recordings, then maybe two or three months later, we assembled the team and we wow. shot three three overnights. Okay, in, so um, pretty quick. LA. Yeah, pretty quick. So it sounds like it was like crazy smooth and all that. You had no like challenges you had to overcome or anything, Antonio? Well, I definitely wouldn't say that. I think as a <laughs> first time director and an actor, as an actor, you have the privilege of really trusting your director to kind of, um, guide you and your job is just to be present throw paint at the wall see what sticks and try to give as many colors as possible in this particular situation i didn't have that same privilege you know of of having someone guide me i had to kind of guide myself which um which was challenging but i made sure to kind of give myself a kind of like physicality or something to do when i would move from okay acting and now moving into directing so that it kind of helped me divide the two in my mind yeah um, that, that, that was, was like your really process fun. or your method yeah exactly and sometimes you know when something's not working and it could potentially be you that's not working and you're the director you're like ah. <laughs> but um you know we figured it out honestly it, it was like it was a lot of fun like i think we really like filmmaking is so inherently collaborative and that's what i love about it and that's what i love about directing as well as an actor you kind of come into projects much later on in the process um, so to be there from the initial inception and to be able to collaborate with others to try and give the vision as high frequency as we could was a really exciting process. So now do you love both equally then writing, directing, I mean, acting, directing, like, are they kind of like neck and neck now for you or do you kind of lean toward one more or the other? Well, you know, I'm an, I'm an actor, like I studied acting. I in university so that's kind of i i'm really passionate about acting and i definitely don't want to stop doing it i hope to have like more opportunities to to do both to be honest like mm -hmm, directing mm -hmm. i imagine <clears throat> kind of wanting to for now stick to directing my own stuff just because i you know if it's gonna fail i'd rather it be my own thing but like um well you're not off to a bad start especially for your yeah. first film right i mean <laughs> this has got to be a confidence booster um and let's just like you know confirm for those who may not know i mean i want to almost say like netflix is like your second home like how many different projects have you been in that are on netflix that are just like really you know out there and, and doing so well i think that's like you know just so so impressive yeah, I think like four or five now. Yeah, I mean, I'm always honored to to come back to like that platform. Obviously, like Netflix really offers so many opportunities to filmmakers and, and they're just generating so much amazing content. So I've been lucky enough to have um, projects that are connected to Netflix for sure. Yeah, I feel very grateful for that. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, I was, you know, obviously prepping for this and I just thought it was so interesting how you were born in London, but spent, was it most of your life in, in Switzerland? I mean, when did you, where are you actually based, I guess I should say now? Yeah, um, so I was born and raised in London, England. And when I was 10 years, 10 years old, I moved to the Italian part of Switzerland. That is where uh, my father was, is, was living. So I went to an Italian speaking school for a little while and then came to the US when I was 14, did two years of high school there, and then went to Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, and now I've lived For in- For your LA. BFA? Yes. And so then, yeah. sorry, after that, then so where are you based now in the States? I, I live in California right now, yeah, Okay, in LA. cool. Yes, cool. yeah. So would you even say that you're, I mean, I don't even want to say like part of the indie filmmaking community, given the fact that, you know, your acting career is at that level. I mean, how do you kind of, I don't want to say fit in, but you know what I mean? It's not like you're a newbie and you just got out of school and you're trying to like kind of do your thing and it's scrappy, right? How do you kind of interact maybe with different colleagues and peers for inspiration, creative support at the level where you're playing now? Yeah, I, I, I don't actually see myself um, at a at a certain level or, or see things like at levels I, I I don't know like honestly I'm just 
I'm really excited. Like even even to be at the Berlinale and to meet other filmmakers, you get to see their films, and we've all kind of a thing we have in common is we've all made something, and so to see their films and then get to ask them questions about how they made certain moments work after having done it mm. myself mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. such an exciting experience, and that is really like so fun. So just to hopefully have the opportunity to spend more time learning and um, expanding with other with other filmmakers and hearing how they kind of like figured it out because that's really what it's about, right? Like I feel like as an actor, I understood the surface of a clock and now I feel like I've turned it over and I'm looking at all the mechanics and mm, pulling them. great way to put it. Okay, mm. so you are still, I mean, I guess like unveiling different parts of it and in within a certain community, like as a filmmaker you're operating in one manner, but maybe as an actor you're operating at a different, you know, kind of level and maybe match. Yeah, yeah. And and honestly like I still have I still feel like oh my gosh, like uh, of course uh, constantly, constantly learning and like you know, a short film is one beast and a feature is a whole nother and understanding the structure of a feature, what that mm. means traditionally. And then if you want to kind of switch that on its head, being aware of the rules first, you know, or just having more like mindfulness around that is kind of where I'm putting my focus now. Cool. So <coughs> tell me a little bit about being like boots on the ground there right now, because as I've, you know, kind of talked with other filmmakers about this. If you look at the trades, it's like, oh, everything's really quiet and there's no red carpet and you get this very somber like <laughs> vibe, right? Yeah. Um, but then when you talk to you guys, it's like, oh no, we're talking like to each other and there might not be huge parties, but it, there's still like a lot of energy. What what do you feel? And I guess it's is it your first time there, right? So you may not have it yes. to oh, compare yeah. it to, but what do you think just kind of as your debut there? I think energy is permeating through the masks. <laughs> like we're all so excited. Love it. It's amazing. It was our first time seeing the movie on a big screen, which is a really great experience. And it was every a lot of the filmmakers' first time experiencing their movies on a big screen. So you feel that energy. We come out of the theater, everyone's buzzing, everyone's so excited to to talk, and it feels like we've all accomplished something. And and I feel, even though I've known them for a very little time, like very proud of the other filmmakers in, in a way. And, and I, I kind of feel that from them too. Like we're all, we have this um, thing that we can connect on and, and especially getting to know filmmakers from all over the world, you know. Um, European cinema is very different from from US cinema, c- cinema in certain regards. So it's exciting to be able to see different ways that people tell stories based on where they're from. You well, know? It's so, so true. Cool. It's so true. Because I had the opportunity to live in Paris for many years. And so the vibe there is completely different. And they would always remark about how like the assistant of the assistant of the assistant has an assistant in, you know, big U.S. filmmaking. And they're like, you know, I wouldn't say scrappy. You see a ton of credits, but it's it's just not maybe as widely like, you know, producer as massive a project, but you still get that emotion across and it's more mm. reflective of the culture and the values in, in that space. And we have ours and it just kind of all coexists. But you said that you've been able to talk to a bunch of different filmmakers and all that. Do you have a special like strategy or vibe that, that you use when you're at like film festivals now that you're experiencing them? Like, I mean, do you have like a, a kind of layout or a plan of attack, if you will. I know different people have different ways that they, you know, kind of do things to like maximize the experience. Or some people are just like, you know what, I'm just gonna let it flow. Some people are just like, I'm gonna just sit at the bar and see who, <laughs> who pops up. Do you have yeah. like an Antonio method? Well, you know, it is it is uh, challenging with COVID for sure. Still yeah. being very much a reality that um, the spontaneous meetings don't happen. Uh, in the same way that I imagine they do when festivals are typically running. But, <clears throat> you know, I'm I'm more of a kind of just enthusiastic, grateful to be here type. Like, I, honestly, we're just watching a lot of movies, which is really fun. And um, yeah, I don't I don't have an approach. I, I think maybe it's because I'm working on developing a feature right now that my focus is is on my favorite part of the process, which is kind of like the the cooking, the putting in spices, the the creative, you know, elastic part of the process where things can move and shift and change mm-hmm, in really mm-hmm. exciting ways and trying to understand motivations of character, you know, all of that stuff. So I don't feel in a particularly like <clears throat> um, <clears throat> networky place right now. Okay. Um, it's more just like really- maybe absorbing the vibe and the energy. 
totally. Yeah, absorbing the vibe, just just celebrating. And that's a lot easier on oneself, isn't it? It's not like you know you have to look down at your watch and be like, I've only talked to like twenty million people today. I need to do forty million. <laughs> I I like that approach, you know, a, a lot better because um, it's just more peaceful. Yeah, and also I think you know with a movie like this that is slightly more experimental, like kind of does the work for you. Where if people mm. are going to do they kind of already have a feeling for your vibe and the types of things you're making. So that's nice as well. You know, you yeah. know that if he's reaching out, it's because it really spoke to them, which is, which is great. So <clears throat> that's also really nice. Very cool. Well, you already answered my next question, which was what you're going to be working on next. So we know that. So I guess we can move on to the last one, which is how can everybody keep up with you and your next fabulousness that you're doing? Like, are you active on social or is it best like on a website? What's like, now's the time to promo. Tony, okay, promo, promo. Uh, I am on Instagram at Tony with an I, Mars, T-O-N-I-M-A-R-Z. You can follow for adventures there. Um, yeah, just that's, that's okay. it. <laughs> Tony, you have like such fun energy. Like you must just be like, you and your team there are like, I know like probably just tearing it up. So I just wish you like even more fun and even more oh. success. And I thank you so much for, for taking the time for sure. Are you kidding me? I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for, for the interview. And I oh, hope to meet you soon, talk to you soon. My Everything. absolute pleasure. You guys, I hope that you've enjoyed watching this. Do um, support Antonio Sash Tony. Um, for um, star bleepers and everything else that he's working on. Cause as you can see, he's like nothing but creative energy. So I'm so glad <laughs> that you could take the time to watch this. Thank you as always. I am Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series right here at Filmio. <laughs>